Boy, oh boy, was today an absolutely wild day in my initial experiences with trading options. I never expected this worst case scenario to happen. I'll talk more about it in this video. Hey everyone, it's the Coco Nomad. Welcome to my channel where I talk about financial and location independence and provide tips, tools, and techniques that help you make a living and a life. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk about my experience with options trading, which is very, very new. And I had a day that was as red as my hair. So I really wanna dive into this so we can understand some of the sort of challenges and risk involved if you are going to do options trading. And here's where I wanted to talk about, even with what I considered a safe strategy, I still took a lot of risk in terms of the actual stock that I chose. And I knew that going in and I wanna dive into that a little bit, but let's set the scenario. So I, um, I'm gonna show my, you can see my uh, Robinhood account. You can see that it's down quite a bit. It's actually down, I think a little bit over 10% in the last day because uh, midnight, right around midnight last night, I just happened to check my current status as I usually try to update my spreadsheets um, and, and, and late at night before the next day, if I'm having something I need to watch. And I noticed <laughs> that the price of my options had, or the stock price, not my options, had plummeted. Like it was insane. The price that was trading at about 50, right around $58. And it dropped all the way down. I think it hit a low at one point of about 12 or 13, but when I saw it was around 15, 15 to $16. And I had no idea what happened. Now, just to kind of briefly recap, the stock that I was um, invested in or have bought, sold the options on, and I sold options, I did not buy them, is that it was in Cortexum, which is a pharmaceutical company and they're working on a drug that helps with Alzheimer's. And apparently there was some news about their latest test. And on that news, the price plummeted. Now, if you actually read the news, you'd understand that news wasn't actually bad news. It was basically saying that it showed a 57% reduction in the uh, symptoms or improvement, 57% improvement for patients that were tested, but it didn't meet the criteria for the second test, which is some information that, was, that is reported by caregivers. But apparently that was enough for to send, you know, panic selling and it's huge sell off. So uh, just to explain what my position was initially back in, I want to say like a week and a half ago, I actually sold three contracts on this particular stock, two contracts at a $20 strike price and one contract at a $40 strike price. And at the time, the stock was trading at about $63. And it was moving up and down. It was pretty much just sort of oscillating between 63 all the way down to maybe like 56, 57. So I felt pretty comfortable, even though this was a high volatility stock. I said, this is an expiration on November 19th. I know the earnings call is coming on, I believe it's the 9th, somewhere between the 9th and the 11th. And I was already planning to sort of exit this strategy before then, because I just didn't know what the news of the earnings were going to be and how it was going to affect the price. Now, I, I felt pretty confident at 20, regardless, like I could just hold those. But that 41 said, maybe it'll lose half of its value. I don't know enough about the stock yet. I've been following it for a couple of weeks, but I'm still sort of gauging like how these things behave. And I've looked at the charts and from the past year, past five years, or well, it hasn't been around for five years, but ever since it was uh, initially offered. And uh, the lowest price before then was $17. I was like, it opened at 17. It had never really traded below 17. So I felt pretty confident that 20 was a, was a relatively safe, and I say relatively given the volatility, relatively safe price. Uh, that's right price. But that $40 premium, the premium at $40 was very, very enticing. So I sold the two contracts at 20 for a total of $1,210 receiving that premium. And then I sold the one $40 uh, strike price for a premium of $1,870. And they all expired on the 19th. So I had about $8,000 of collateral in this play, but immediately received that premium. So I was already at three, 3,080 bucks of premium coming back to me immediately, even if I got assigned. So 
when the news happened and the price dropped, uh, I said, oh, well, I'm not panicking. I was like, well, I kind of felt that it was going to drop, but I didn't think it would drop on this news. I thought it would drop a week and a half later on the leading up to earnings or right after earnings. So I was already planning to sort of exit my position, but really just roll it into the Decembers because I was like, I'm long on it. I do think that with the success, I think that the price long-term, maybe not 60, $63, definitely not the high that it had, I believe, like a while back over a year ago, a hundred plus dollars, but 35 to $40, you know, I thought it was, was okay. And I thought I had enough time to roll that $40 position. So that was my mindset. Now, with this huge drop, what did I do? Um, so what I ended up doing was, first thing, I went to the park in the morning to work out like I always did. Uh, and I just said, I would do my workout and wait for the market to open. And then I decided, like, I'll just exit out of this deal. I actually, the night before, went ahead and put in a uh, buy to close on all the contracts at the prices that they were, they were showing uh, the night before. And I was hoping that maybe first thing in the morning, they would all uh, exercise or all be sold or a bought, someone would, would uh, execute. And well, it happened on the $20, which makes sense because they were still, you know, made sense for the long term. But that $40, the contract price jumped up. And so I ended up having to buy that one back at a cost that was higher than what I sold it. So I ended up losing money on that. It was, it represented a total loss of $330 to buy to close that contract. So this was my first loss on a contract since I've been doing this. Um, now the 220s, I did exit with a profit of 270. So that ended up making my loss at that point uh, $60. And that $60 loss on the on this on those series of contracts that opened up. Now, the lesson that I learned was well, multiple lessons, because this was a this was a big, big lesson. Uh, the first one is that pharmaceuticals are volatile. And you just have to be prepared uh, for the swings, which I knew going in. I already knew that. I wasn't scared of the swings. And like I said, I woke up that morning. I saw it the night before. I was actually excited. I was really like, oh, wow, this thing has dropped. And because I was only selling these puts, um, I was just putting up collateral. And I knew it was like, oh, the, the likelihood of these things getting assigned tomorrow is very, very low because we're still more than two weeks, two weeks away from uh, the expiration date. And so a lot of people probably wanna see what this thing still does after all of this activity. But where I did get uh, a little too uh, fast was I saw an op buying opportunity and I jumped on it first thing in the morning and I should have waited. Um, and I told myself when I was working out in the park, it's like, just wait until I get out of the shower when I come back home. But I've got my phone with me and Robinhood makes it very, very easy. So I went ahead immediately and started buying shares like outright. Uh, the price was bouncing back and I didn't want to miss. I thought it might cap bounce and just bounce back up to like above 20. And I didn't want to get those shares at above 20. I'd already saw it in my mind long term that I was comfortable with a price of $20 per share and holding this thing in the long term. If I have to hold it for another year, two years, three years, five years, it doesn't really matter. Um, Cause I said, I, th I thought that the long-term prospects for this was still well above 20 bucks. So when I saw it rise this morning from 17 to $18, I immediately said, oh, I need to get in on this before it goes back up to 20. Instead of just being patient, uh, because had I been patient, it ended up dropping all the way down to 14 again. And had I just waited about a half an hour, like I said, go home, take a shower, get out, look, I would have been able to scoop up a bunch of shares at between 14 and $16. Now, I say that to say, sometimes you just got to wait. I think that's the lesson I'm learning from here is just wait to see how it shakes out. And don't be in such a hurry, especially since I'm having a long term view on this. And I did need to buy those shares back tomorrow. The second thing is that laddering those, those the options that I sold, those puts, actually helped me. Um, I almost sold, bought to close that 40 a couple of times this week already from Monday because I was waiting for it to hit what I've established as a rule that once I reach 50 to 70% profitability in an options trade, I go ahead and cash it out. And I'll just roll into the next period. I'll just take the profits then. I don't need 100%. I don't want to wait another three or four weeks for when I've got all these gains 
But the problem was it hadn't hit 50%. So it hadn't hit that threshold for me. It was still at around, I want to say between 25 and 33% is where it had been all week. And I thought about even rolling down to those 220s with my 40, because again, even before any of this happened, I was long-term comfortable at $20. So I didn't. And I really was like, I was having a conversation with my friend, um, Carlton at Carlton's Travel Adventures, his YouTube channel. You might want to check it out. I don't know if he's talking about it tonight on his live, but we've been talking about this all day. And so I decided to hold on and just wait. Because I told him, it's like, I'm going to wait till probably the 31st or the 1st, and I'll look to roll that 40 down to 220s, and I'll have four contracts at 20. Well, uh, that didn't happen. So, uh, but what I didn't want was to get assigned early at $40 a share for a, a stock that was trading at $15, because that was a huge loss. That's more than the $330 loss that I took um, on unloading that particular contract. Now, what I ended up doing immediately, though, is I ended up selling covered calls right at that $20 strike price. So I just kept buying up shares. And my average cost per share right now is, according to Robin, it is $17.79. But that doesn't take into account the premium. The premium gets me all the way down to $16.12, which means that even if uh, it hits the strike price at $20 over the next you know, few weeks, because I still have that November 19th expiration date, um, I'm going to end up pocketing close to $400 per contract plus the premium that I collected, which was about 600 and I want to say $690. So it's still going to work out very, very well, which is why I was like, I'm not panicking. I didn't reap the, the nice five or $600 benefit that I would have gotten immediately had I just exercised and gotten out or even rolled today. I would have made out a bit better, but it's okay. Uh, I'm not lesson learned. And I look at this to say, okay, do I need to adjust my rule on profitability for highly vital, volatile stocks as they move? Do I move my number down to 33%, 35%, or is 50 to 70% still good? And that remains to be seen. So that is the outline, outstanding question that I still have, and I haven't decided yet. I'm going to see how this goes. And then my next steps are... Quite simple. I'm still bullish on the stock. So I'm definitely, um, again, I now own 400 shares of this stock and I'm selling cover calls at a $20 strike price. Now, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to roll that up as the stock prices. If this price keeps moving up, I will buy to close those, take whatever profit, which right now is about 37%. And I'll just roll them up to another, uh, the next higher strike price, maybe 25, maybe $30. And I may ladder it again. I may ladder it since I've got 400, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, 400 shares, I might do one at 20, one at 25, one at 30, one at 35, and just repeat the rolling. Now, the thing that I did, additional lesson I did learn is that in my account with Robinhood, I am not allowed to, I get a warning uh, if I do pattern day trades of four in a five day period. And I already did two because what I ended up doing was I made a couple of moves on some other contracts that I sold in the same stock. I initially uh, sold one at 30 earlier today and one at 25, I ended up just taking the profit out of both of those and rolling those down into all the 20. So that's how I'm holding four at $20. And that ended up reducing my loss of $60 all the way down to $15. So in terms of the immediate uh, impact of that, that trade, I'm now only dealing with a net loss of $15 overall. And I'm set up for another six or seven hundred dollars, six almost seven hundred dollars, in this with this exact same expiration date. So, at the end of the day, it's a great lesson learned. Um, I will continue to watch the stock. Um, I got some great advice from another friend who does a different style of trading, but uh, he's just like have this bank of of stocks that you follow, and that's what you you stick with all the time, and that's what you know. You just keep them in your watch list, which I do have a watch list. Um, and I do have an appetite for risk. So this isn't something for me. I'm not like, oh, if I lose this, you know, and I, I was never scared I was going to lose $8,000. You know, it's like, okay, maybe it'll be worth half, you know, and I've got to hold this for another year. But I was okay with that too. So, um, so this is just, I wanted to do an update and just share sort of like this thrilling kind of experience that happened and the lessons learned to be really, really careful with what you're doing out here. And this is one of the reasons why I say, don't take financial advice from me. 
look at look what happened. I don't know what I'm doing, you know, or anybody else who is just like a trusted professional financial advisor and a fiduciary, someone who has your best interests at heart, and they're not here to just sell you some product. And I always say it in videos because that happened to me years ago when I used to invest. I was in a, I was being sold products that benefited the person who sold for the company that they worked for. And I did not realize until I started looking at the numbers later that I was actually losing a lot, that like I wasn't really participating in the market gains that I should have because they were really getting some nice premiums off of me off the top a nice percentage and so i've decided now to take the reins into my own hands and just do it myself you know and i'm not saying you should do that i'm absolutely not suggesting anybody but for me it works um i'm willing to take the risk and like i told a friend i've lost far more money chasing cards the poker table than i've lost in this thing so we haven't even approached my poker losses so i'm okay uh, but if you don't have that risk tolerance and you don't have a bankroll to do this, I would highly advise you do not do this. Um, just be entertained by my mishaps. And that's it. Just treat it like a, you're binge watching a TV show. So in closing, if you find this entertaining or informative, because that's really what it's here for, uh, please click the like button. I will be doing more of these uh, in addition to my regular reports that you can see. I have links to in the description. If you have any questions or comments, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some comments about, you know, where I messed up. And that's fine. I've been talking to people about it all day. It's not a big deal. Um, and I mean, I'm proud of the fact that I minimized the loss. So I'll take 15, you know, in a lesson learned and moving forward with still upside going forward. So I'm okay with it. Uh, but as always, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. Really appreciate the support in the channel. And uh, have an amazing day and a profitable day in whatever you're doing, not just money, but just have like a wonderful, profitable day. And I will see you next time. Cheers.